Um, there we go. And we're live. <laughs> so is this face is this Facebook Live? This is Facebook Live, so you're actually live in my profile. This is the first ever time I've done Facebook Live, so I feel nerdy now. Well, I've popped cherry. You popped my cherry. Popped you popped my Facebook Live cherry. This is amazing. I've popped Steve Sims pop Facebook cherry. I'm feeling <laughs> proud right now. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's an accomplishment. Accomplishment of the day. I'm happy. All right. Well, let me do a quick intro for you, my friend. <laughs> Guys, I'm live today with none other than Steve Sims. So, for those of you who haven't heard of Steve yet, he's the guy that billionaires, playboys, celebrities all look to when... They're looking for unique experiences. He runs a company called Bluefish HQ. Anyway, so I'll actually jump to the interview with him now just so he can give you the, his background for himself. How are you, my man? I'm good. Thank you. I'm here chilling, Los Angeles, and uh, sipping a whiskey while we chat. Dude, so, uh, do you live in Los Angeles now, or what's whereabouts? I do. I live, I, live in, uh, I live in Los Angeles. I'm up in the hills. Okay, cool. So you started off. Where do you where do you grow up? What's your well? I started off just outside of London, construction firm. Uh, I was a builder. Uh, I was a doorman. Uh, then I tried to get a job in Hong Kong. Um, they employed me, which uh, is silly. I arrived on the Saturday and I was fired on the Tuesday. So that was the shortest career I ever had. And then I started doing door work again. And before you knew it, just started kind of throwing parties, and it grew into what it is now just started throwing parties how do you just start throwing parties in hong kong after just showing you up? know yeah it was kind of it was I, none of this was planned it was all kind of like just a mishmash of things but i started working on the door of clubs and whenever a, a guy would turn up to go into the club if it was pretty lame and i could see the guy wanted to spend some money i didn't want to burn him because if you go into a club and it's not happening, he's never going to go back again. So I would say to him, look, it's just not happening tonight. So float down the road, see Jimmy, tell him Sim sent you. That's where it's happening tonight. Now, my boss was pissed off, but I would tell him, look, you're going to burn these people. They're never going to come back again. So, you know, you've got to make it a little bit more enticing. So in the end, they start asking me, well, how do we make it enticing? I'll be like, right, choose let's do this, 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 20% of the bar, let's make it happen. And so I just started throwing it. I started throwing parties that I would go to and starting telling these people, tonight, tonight, you want to be. And the funny thing was, I would be on the front door, so I would never actually go into the party that I was throwing. And it just grew from there. And I took over yachts, penthouses, and just started doing some stuff that I just thought was cool. And people seemed to like it and followed me around. Okay, that's a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there was no technology. This this wasn't kind of right. Let's yeah. map out how to be the world's greatest concierge. No, 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 none of that. Okay, so you're in there, you hang out. Who who are these people you're inviting to your parties? Just random people or... I'm assuming they've got some sort of... No, not many. So they thought what? You know, continue with that phrase. You thought they would be what? I'm assuming they've got some sort of cash in order to come to these parties, or is it just literally anyone? Do you know, I, I wanted to make sure they were cool. This is how it first happened. So I wanted to make sure, and this is funny, because this is how I've landed my philosophy hmm. for my life. I've done something I call the chug test, and the chug test is very simple. <laughs> Do I want to have a beer with you? Do I want to have a whiskey with you? Do I want to have a cup of coffee with you? And if the answer is no, I'm not doing business with you. It's as simple as that. It's a chug test. You know, would I, would I want to have a drink with this person? Fuck no. Then you're out of my life. You know, I, can, I can find people I do want to hang with. Yeah. So that's, that's the simplicity. So if someone came up to the door, I'd say to them, look, we're doing bottle service tonight. Is that okay? And if I've got a bit of attitude, I'll be like, well, actually, I've just heard all tables are booked, you know, and I would send them on their way. I would kick them off. Um, but if I got people that I just thought was cool and they were like, I don't want bowl service. I just want a ton of beers. All right, fine. 
<laughs> a credit card in you go you're gonna have a good time i just wanted to be able to yeah. deal with people that i liked um bear in mind i didn't think this was gonna be i didn't think this was gonna turn into the concierge it was now so i never planned it with any intelligence it was just a gut reaction do i want to hang out with this person is this person cool and the whole the whole way the company came about the whole password bluefish was because is I would suddenly start looking through the papers. Now, mm. bear in mind, this was the 90s. We didn't have things called computers, but we had these things called fax machines. Oh, so Jesus. I would send out these faxes. I know. I would get these girls to send out these fax, faxes to people going, look, this is where the party is tonight. Turn up and you've got to, you've got to come up with the password. And it would be like, finish this sentence. One fish, two fish, red fish, and that'd be it. So I'd have these guys turning up, and we'd send them to, like, the CEOs and directors and all this, and they would turn up and they would go, bluefish. And we'd be like, you're in. But we'd get these other pricks turn up going, oh, I'm here for the party. And the whole thing's kicking off behind you, and we'd be like, there's no party here tonight, mate. You know, I think you got the wrong address. They'd be like, yeah, I got a fax. Don't know anything about that. We would just blank them. If they had so much ego that they can just have a bit of humility and uh, just be normal by coming up with this funny. And we had things like, name two of the Teletubbies, okay? And this this one caught a lot of people. You, you, yeah. You've heard of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? Yes, I have. Narnia? Okay. Narnia, of course, right? Yeah. Who's the lion? Oh, Jesus... You see, that face, it's, 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 that, that face is it. We would send people out going, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe, name the lion, that's the password for tonight. So people would come over going, because, of course, we didn't have internet, so they couldn't Google it, and people would go, I don't know, it's, it's something. It was Aslan. That was the name of the lion, Aslan. Yep. So people would come over going, I don't know. I, it, it, I, I, I don't know, but they just had a bit of a giggle with it. And we would just go, oh, we'll let you off tonight, but get it right next time. And we were just having a giggle. Now, you're talking to a guy that, you know, owns an airline. And, you know, he's just like freaking out at the front door with his wife because he can't remember the name of the lion. And we just thought those are the kind of people we want to hang out with. So that's how it started. When did you start the company? Oh, this was 1994. Well, it wasn't a business. Here's how it worked. I wanted, I was a bricklayer. I actually delusionally wanted to be a stockbroker. So I thought to be a stockbroker, seeing as I was ugly as sin, I couldn't talk. I was terrible at grammar. The only way that I would be able to become a stockbroker was if I knew a load of rich people. So... <laughs> Working on the door, I just invited rich people, thinking that if I knew 50 rich people, they would go and I could go to a bank and go, hey, can you talk to me a stockbroker? I know 50 rich people, okay? So this was the early 90s. That was my entire philosophy. So the company didn't start. I was, I was getting turned down by every bank in the planet. And then it got to about 96, 97 and people said to, kept on calling me going, is that that Bluefish company? We want you to do this. Oh, and can you do this? And we want to go there. So I was doing it thinking I would become a stockbroker. And it was about 97, 98 that I realized there was no hope. But by now, I had all these people following me around just going, look, I want to go here. I want to do this. Can you hook this up? And I was just a man that could. I've got a really random uh, theoretical question coming in now from St Thomas Bell. Can you get... Hey, Thomas, how are you? You know Tom? No? No, not at all. <laughs> oh, just being polite. That's nice of you. Um, can you get a tenth city built by Bedouin nomads in the Sahara? <laughs> yeah, you, how big's your checkbook? Um, that was the thing that it came down to. It was just a really case of, like, what is your dream and desire? And um, can you afford to fulfill it? So... It's not being rude. You may not be able to fulfill it today. You may be able to fulfill it in a year or two years. But that, that's what it came down to. So people were, were coming up to me going, look, I want to drive a Formula One car uh, that's a Ferrari. I want to I wanna play drums with the Guns N' Roses drummer. I want to sing on stage with Journey. I want to get married in the Vatican by the Pope. And these are all things that we mm. did. Um, 
So, of course, every time we did something bigger, you know, Forbes or CNN would write about it and, and send it out. So people were coming to us going, well, that's great, but I actually want to can I ride a motorcycle down the China Wall or I want to do it. It just got bigger and bigger and just wilder <laughs> and wilder. So then we were a case of, yeah, we can do that. Send us 20 grand and we'll look hmm. into it. And if they were kind of, whoa, hang on a minute, I don't, look, We've got to trust you that you're going to come forward. You've got to trust us that we're going to get it done. Mm. So by now, we've had 20 years of doing this stuff. We kind of know what we can do and what we can't, can't do. So our biggest trouble now is really just filtering through the client. If we like the client, we'll get it done. So same policy, be a <laughs> chug test? Same chug test. The chug test, funny enough, and it's like all entrepreneurs – your business starts becoming mm. successful, and then what all entrepreneurs do is they fuck it up. They start kind of like overthinking things, and my website's got to be like this, and I need a board of advisors, and I need to do this, and I need to become respect. We all screw it up, and I did the exact same thing. I screwed up about three times before I went, well, hang on a minute. If it was real fun in the beginning, it ain't so much fun now, so I'm going back to square one. So chug test all the way and we've got we got clients all over the planet royalty superstars whatever and they all go through the chug test they all have to apply they all get interviewed and we literally sit down and go well look we got this guy yeah do we like him yeah we like him no we don't like him and we do that who's, who's so, this is now is it, um, is it still just you get is it still just you or do you have other people oh hell no we're about we're about 60 strong worldwide um so you know we, we've got affiliates we got part, we got uh, hosts hmm. uh, internationally, um, and then we've got uh, uh, affiliates. So you know, if we've got a big deal kicking off in say Madrid, we can have people that we've worked with, and we'll say to them, "Look, you help us with this event." So we'll have twenty or thirty people looking after an event with us over there. And we'll have like three or four people that are our main hosts from the UK, Switzerland, or over here from the States, just overseeing it. That's cool. So. <laughs> How does someone get a host job with you? What that seems like an incredible. <laughs> you got normal hosts and you're the host of Steve Zimmer's parties. What is it? Do... What's the criteria there? Um, well, you've got to be comfortable. You've got to be confident. Yeah. Um, you've got to be safe in your own skin. Um, bullshit has no currency with us. Uh, too old for that. So we're always looking for good people that know how to plan travel. But really, you've got to not buy into it. You know, when you get these people and you go, oh, okay, we're doing this for Sting in Tuscany, and they start going, oh, that's exciting. That's the person that's not getting picked to go to Tuscany. We need the person that goes, all right, what date is it? Is this date to this date, and the client needs mm. this. All right, I get it sorted. So you've almost got to not buy into your own stuff. You don't want a drug taker selling drugs. No. So we've got to make sure that whoever's in this world – uh, doesn't really buy into all the glitz and glamour and get sold on it, but really is there to make sure that the client gets the absolute maximum out of that experience. That's a very good point. I remember seeing a, something about yourself, just like you've had all those experiences, you've, you've tried the expensive wines, expensive drinks, but you just don't buy into it. You just love your whiskeys and bikes. I love my uh, I, I love my whiskeys and I love my bikes. Um, yeah, the, the, I'm I'm incredibly fortunate and I'm incredibly wealthy, and I need to put a, a a real a real banner in there between rich and wealthy. Being rich is is a bank account, um, and I, I know people that have millions and millions and tens of millions <laughs> who still consider themselves poor because they can't buy the latest jet or they can't buy an entire hotel. They actually have trouble with themselves because they think they've not made it yet. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not rich. I am not rich, but mm. I can afford whiskey. I can afford gas in the tank. I'm with a woman that loves me. I've got three kids. Some of those like me sometimes. They're teenagers. Um, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm, I'm having a great life. But I've tried the Ferraris. I've tried the Bentleys. I've tried the tailor-made suits. And I've gone back to just like scooting around on an old bike, wearing a black T-shirt and drinking whiskey. So I know where I'm happy. That's cool. So I am lucky. That's awesome. I think many people go through life just trying to work that out and they don't find it out till much, much later in their lives. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, and I'm very fortunate for that and the fact that I have found, I have found my place, I have found my stride, I know what's good and I know how to get around the planet. Are you a big reader? Where do you, do you learn about business stuff or has it all just been a very um, natural process of fail and Natural learn? process of screwing up. Yeah, pretty um, much. <laughs> I know a lot of failures and I'm very fortunate in my business that I meet an incredible amount of successful people and I always like to say to them things like, well, what was the second fuck up you had? What was the third failure? How many times did this go bust? And I like to ask them because successful people are incredible failures. They just didn't allow the failures to define or end that projection and they carried on until it became good. They always say that people are mental and to, uh, they're, they're insane until they become geniuses. Um, and that's what I've noticed a lot with these people. So I have just screwed up an immense amount of times. I still can't work out how to use an Excel spreadsheet. I have no idea how to do HTML. I have no idea how to do a CRM, but I can employ people to do that. So why do I have to? Um, so it's really just been one of those things that I haven't got hung up on stuff. I've gone, well, I don't know how that works. Maybe I can employ someone that does. And that's how I've kind of gone about it. I do read books. Um, there's a lot of self-help books. that I have, I have a 20-page policy. It's got to hook me in 20 pages or it's holding up the door. Um, and so there's a lot of books that, uh, you know, Ryan Holiday, I find absolutely brilliant. Um, He's entertaining. There's a... Uh, Sorry? He's entertaining. Oh, he's great. He's absolutely great, but he's got a great attitude about him. Uh, there's a book I'm reading now. Um, you know, um, I like Jab Jab by uh, Gary Vaynerchuk. That's, that's very good. Um, I'm reading uh, um, Nail It and Scale It at the moment, which I like. I also like a lot of like the, you know, the Dragon Tattoo, the uh, Da Vinci Codes. Uh, you know, I, like, I like to not follow a genre of, of too many motivational books because motivational books are there to piss you off they're there to aggravate you because aggravated oysters make pearls and if you're not aggravated by where you currently are then you're a settler and i don't like settlers so i find that i can only read and my wife will tell me you know do something different because i'll read a book and i'll go god damn it why aren't i doing that and I'll get aggravated and I'll make notes and then I'll be phoning people up going, we're doing this now and I read this on Instagram and we need to be doing it. And I'll suddenly enforce those things. Yeah. And if I read too many of those, I find my blood pressure getting up too much. So I try to kind of like, you know, change it around. I also love reading pod, uh, listening to podcasts. Um, I've got a great habit of jumping on a treadmill or on, on a cycle bike or something, listening to people and the big boys who I absolutely love, are Joe Polish and Dean Jackson. Say that I love Mark. You were on their podcast recently, and you had my boys. a great story about a letter. I think my audience would love to know what the heck is this letter, and what is that strategy? Not strategy, well, is it natural? Was that just something that just evolved, or how did that become a thing? It just see, again, there's, please, 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 anyone that's listening to this, do not, Make the mistake by thinking that I'm an intelligent or educated person, okay? Far from it. I keep things simple and stupid. And if everyone's going right, I don't want to join the crowd. I'm going to go left. So if everyone's doing all these brilliant uh, banner adverts on Facebook, I'm going to pay a local student 20 bucks to write 500 letters, and I'm going to post them, okay? Because while all the traction is now on emails, and everyone out there getting a thousand emails every day telling you about you know, wood flooring, breast implants, tax evasion, and every other piece of rubbish you don't care about. And in the middle of those are some cool emails. I'm sending you a letter and you're opening up your mailbox. And the good thing is when you're opening up the mailbox, you're not looking at a computer screen. And when you're pulling out the letter and you're reading it, I have your 100% attention. So I'm a great believer, and when everyone goes right, go left. If everyone starts sending e uh, letters, mm. I'm going to go right. I'm going to start sending emails. So I just go where there's less noise. Um, 
And I've just found that that's the best way. I just go against the uh, the school. Simple, much simple as that, every single time. That's the dumb thing. You send a... And it just doesn't get me. It, you know, we've got uh, about 140,000 people that subscribe to thebluefish.com. Hmm. So that's a big subscription list. Ooh. Okay. 140,000. Impressive. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Here's where it gets hmm. bollocks. The bottom line of it is if you send out a great email, it will get, get opened up between 10 to 20%, actually less, between 7 to 20%. If it's good, okay? And then you've got an open rate, sorry, a click-through rate of people that will actually click through regarding what you're talking about. And the industry standard's about 7%. So you've got 140,000 emails that's getting opened up by about 500 people. Bad math, but work it out. You're getting a tiny, tiny, tiny little amount of people that are actually finally opening it up. Now, if I send out 100 letters... Every single one of those is getting opened. Okay? My open rate is incredible. And you put in there, I just needed to send you this. And here's where you get entertaining. Rip out something from a magazine. And you say, Joe, I knew you moved into a new house. I saw a dolphin letterbox the other day. I know you need that for your house. And send it to someone. And put your email on that. Go, why did you send me that? There's nothing better than getting an email from someone that says, hey, I got this letter and I had this in it. You know, why did you send it to me? I just thought it'd be funny. Did it make you smile? Yeah, it made me smile. Then it did the job. And so you're now communicating. So sending out letters, mm. sending out books. Here's another good one. Tip of the day. You've got a lot of entrepreneurs that follow your show. Mm. Okay. They go, to, they go to conferences. They go to seminars. Every conference and seminar has got some guy up there promoting their book, okay? Go up to him and go, look, I would like to send 20 of your books to my top clients. Can I have 20 of your books? They will give you the books for free, okay? <laughs> right in the in inside of it, Joe, I was at a seminar. This book caught my attention. I thought of you. Post them the book. When was the last time you got a book in your letterbox? That's cool. Now, how much did it cost you? It cost you the freaking postage. But the beautiful thing is, anyone that gets a book in their letterbox, and the only reason they won't open it is if you've got the mail address wrong. But if you've got the right address, they'll go, hey, thanks for the book. Hey, no worries. I was thinking of you. I thought I'd send it over. Stand out. It's massively. Actually, I've got um, just Alex here asking, what's the most absurd request you've had? Well, it was probably a couple of years ago I got this guy actually phoned me up and uh, he wanted to get married in the Vatican by the Pope. Um, so it was kind of one of those things that we went, never done that before. Um, and so we actually had to go and do it. And that was quite, that was quite cool to do. But while I was in Italy planning it, I got another client contact the company who said that he was taking his uh, girlfriend uh, to Florence and they had never been uh, she had never been to Florence before he had been many times and here was the thing he said I want to be in the most exclusive restaurant in Florence and he was very very um, uh, strong about yeah. that's right guys we had the call drop let's see if we can reconnect Lost you there, man. I lost you. Yeah, <laughs> right. don't know what happened. It's all good. So we had this client that that wanted just to jump in again. Is that all right? Yeah, go, go for it. Just jump straight into it. I've already told the guys that we'll jump back into it. And then... uh, all right. So the guy actually contacted us. He wanted to go to this amazing restaurant. So we ended up trying to find what was the most exclusive, <laughs> incredible place we could find. Hmm. We actually took over the Academia Museum that houses the statue of Michelangelo's David. And for the first time, stuck a table of six at the feet of Michelangelo's David oh, and then had Andrea Bocelli came in and serenade them during dinner. So that was quite wacky and wild. So that was one of those cool requests that just went, just went stupid. Everything we asked for came off. And it's amazing. Uh, I think it was Arnold Palmer that said, um, the more I practice, the better I get. Everything we wanted, they said yes to. So it was kind of cool. So that was, uh, that was one of the coolest ones recently. 
I'm going to ask, does that, how does it translate into your normal life, being able to just ask for ballsy things like that? Do you know, do you, know you, you never need to buy into your own hype, but every now and then I'll be making a phone call to someone, and you know when you're looking through your contact lists because you've got to phone mm. up Billy or something? Yeah. And then you see the Billy's above him, and you see the Billy's below, and like two of them are rock stars and one of them's an ex-president, and you just go... <laughs> Holy fuck! You know, you just, yeah. you, you just, it, it, it does take a moment. You just go, oh, wow, okay. So it's funny, but I've never wanted to be anything than me. Um, and I believe the only thing I have, apart from my stunning good looks, <laughs> is my word. So um, as long as I keep my word, I'm, I'm going to stay in business. But it is, it is quite humbling every now and then just to look at these kind of things and to get an email or to get a phone call, like Jay Abraham, who's a freaking yeah. myth. Um, oh, and, a, and a close friend, you know, I get a phone call from Jay and I'm talking to Jay and then I hang up and I don't care how many times I've spoken to Jay. It still puts goosebumps through me that I'm speaking to Jay Abraham as, as a friend. And then Joe Polish will text me and I'm like, this is, this is just incredible. I'm, I'm undeserving of these people, but, um, I'm never going to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think the secret might be out there. I think we're broadcasting to good 20-odd people. Shit. So Shit. Everyone's texting Jay going, Sims is talking about you. Jay, so. Jay. No, Jay, I, have saw, I saw a really amazing interview with Jay on, um, I think, copywriting virtual summit at the moment. I didn't realise he was like that. I, I knew he'd be a little bit different, but I didn't realise he had the ADHD and everything. But he's actually... Jay, Jay is just incredible. Jay... I think we've just mentioned two of the most phenomenal people in my world. Jay and Joe are two guys that just get it and they can just talk you around in circles. And I said to you earlier about being aggravated. Mm. Um, there's never, there's never a time that I'm at Jay's house or I'm with Joe or something like that, that I don't get back on the bike or get in the car and I'm just pissed off. Because they just come out with these nuggets. And I'm just like, God, why aren't I doing that? Because here's the key. There's, there's not, it's not where they go, well, okay, you have to design an algorithm and you need to understand this and you need... They don't have any of those things. They give you simple, oh, stupid it, stuff. My what? Just died. Did I die? Are you there? So we've had... Uh, I lost you, Joe. There we are. We're back. You there? We're back. All right. Okay. So these guys, Joe and Jay, just give you nuggets of wisdom that are just stupid stuff that people don't do. You can't listen to Jay's stuff and have it be too complicated to actually utilize. And ideas ain't worth shit. Action's everything. And Jay gives you this stuff. And if Jay tells you, hey, why don't you try this? It's disrespectful not to do it. I was listening to uh, Sticking Point Solution and like 93 referral session. And I, I, t- I understand what you're saying about the whole aggravation thing. I was like, okay, shit, I'm not doing that. Shit, I'm not doing that. Shit, I'm not doing you that. You do. Oh, yeah, I can be sitting in a room. I'm with Joe Polish next week and I'm going to be sitting in the room. And, and it starts on Monday, finishes on Wednesday. I know by about Monday lunchtime, I'm going to be sitting there like some kind of psychotic hit. Man, just kind of like all oh, freaking irate because I'm just learning these things that I'm just not doing. And I make notes, and these are instructions. Steve, as far as I'm concerned, if I write it down, it's an instruction. Have you, you can't hear me? Hi. Hello? Have I gone? Hello? What's going on? One, two, three. Lost audio. <laughs> Oh, there we are. Is this Facebook Live playing games again? No, I think it's because my audio died, so Skype was having a little hissy fit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of doing things live, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we always get these things. But no, we were just saying that ideas, ideas are, uh, aren't worth shit, but it's actions that matter. So when you get someone tell you something, pay the respect and just like write it down and then make sure you do it. Oh, man, it's insane. Okay, so you've talked to these guys, you've done all this incredible stuff. 
way to the future for you. I'll just keep doing it. Christ, I had someone say to me before, you know, oh, do you want to sell your company or stuff like that? I get paid to fly around the world and spend other people's money doing crazy shit. Why the hell would I want to sell this? Um, no, it's, uh, I actually found something that's me. Um, and you know, the, the horrible cliche that everyone goes, Ugh. you find something you love doing, you never work a day in your life. You know, I'm stood here chatting to you. I'm sipping my whiskey. I'm in my, in my cave of bikes. You know, how can I get a job that would do anything like this? So I'm just going to keep doing what I do. I've lost audio again, man. Um, I'm gone again. This is getting annoying. <laughs> Let's try it connecting again. Okay, can you try it? You there? Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. It's... Connecting and disconnecting. I don't know what's going on. It's annoying. Anyways. Am I there? Yeah, I can hear you. The horrible cliche you were saying. Um, yeah, the, uh, I was saying about, you know, if you, if you find a, a job you love, you never work a day in your life. Hmm. And that's what I have. So why the hell would I ever want to do anything different to this? Okay. Question. So three of the top books that you'd recommend for people to... That, three, of the, three of the top books that have had the most influence on your own life. Um, Jay Abraham gave me this book as a present. It's Dr. Zeus, The Places We Go. Okay? It's a kiddies book, but so profound, read it. You know, you'll just go, shit, you know? So that's one of my books. Um, I would say one of my other ones was, um, I'm reading Nail It and Scale It now. Uh, I'm not quite sure if I can quote it, but I'm enjoying it. Um, Basically anything by Ryan Holiday um, and Tucker Max. So those. Cool. Favorite co- favorite country in the world to, go- to visit? The next one. Excellent. I, 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 if I had to stay in one country, if I had to stay in one country, uh, I think I'd go nuts. The beautiful thing is, once a month I'm flying somewhere. So uh, I love traveling around. Awesome. Um, favorite. Alcoholic beverage to drink uh, and brand whiskey. Whiskey. Is there whiskey. Brand? In fact, brand. Uh, I'm here now, and I've already gone through this one, so I'm kind of like uh, getting all, getting all impatient for my second. So it's got to be whiskey. Japanese whiskey. I'm mad lover of shivers uh, for a regular drink. Love it. Um, who, as a person, has had most influence in your life? My wife. My Love wife. It. And. In what ways? Does she just keep you centred or? She keeps me centred every now and then when I get a bit tired, she kicks me in the nuts and tells me to man up and get on with it. And every now and then when I get too cocky, she kicks me in the nuts and tells me to calm down. Love it. Um, if you were to go back in time and speak to your 20 year old self, knowing what you know now, what advice would you give them? I wouldn't. You know, everyone wants to go back and actually rectify any mistakes and cock ups they did. The simple fact is that every time I screwed up, I mm. didn't allow the screw up to define me. I allowed it to be education on what not to do. So if I did walk into a bar and I saw my 20-year-old self, I think I'd probably just sit there, buy him a drink, chat with him and tell him, you know, it's going to be all right. You know, knock yourself out and then I'd walk out. Because there's nothing – if I stopped, and I've done this, mm. if I went back and planned and went, I wish – that hadn't happened i wish that company hadn't failed it wouldn't have projected me into the next one so be thankful of the lessons you learn and the education you get it has been an absolute freaking pleasure and thanks so thanks so much for being on live with us tonight i'm glad i got a chance to pop your cherry <laughs> i'm on facebook live now there I'm you facebook go live. cool brother thanks so much done i think i'll um, stop uh, the interview there uh, cheers cheers